everybody, Joe Workman here, and today I'm really excited to show you the new Impact Stack. And to call Impact a slideshow is kind of a disservice, because while it is a beautiful slideshow and it really has silky smooth crossfades, it's a disservice because it's so much more than that, right? With Traditionally, when we use sliders to make banners and whatnot, we were really at the mercy of the size of the content that we added to the banner to actually size it, right? But impact, you define this size and impact fits the content for that. And not only does it support images, it also supports video. And you can overlay content on top of those images or video as well. So impact is really powerful. Um, you can use it for full page headers. You can use it for inline headers within your content. Um, it's very flexible. It really is gonna be, I think, the best kind of banner slideshow out there. So without further ado, let's jump in and see exactly what Impact can do for us. So first we're gonna review the Impact demo site. And as you see on the demo homepage, we have a beautiful full screen slideshow. And you'll notice that the crossfades are silky smooth, right? And what's even amazing with the crossfade in Impact is that not only does it support images, but also supports video. And one thing that you'll notice with the impact crossfade is that the background of the site never bleeds through. This is the problem with crossfading of images, right? And impact does it beautifully so that the background of your site never compromises the colors that are inside of your images. Now in this particular case, impact is configured to be a full screen header, right? or a hero header as some people call them. And you'll notice that at the bottom, we actually have a scroll down button. So if you click on this button, Impact will actually scroll up um, and uh, you know unveil the rest of your web page for you. <clears throat> now let's go ahead and see some of the other options that we can actually use with Impact. So here we are on the layout page on the Impact demo site. And what we'll notice is that Impact is currently taking up a proportion of the web page, not the entire height as we saw in the previous example. And what's great here is that I've actually defined a size that I wanted for my banner, and then Impact inserted the video to fill that space for me, right? This is very powerful because this allows us control over the size of our banners, okay? And then Impact adds the content to fill that area for us. Now here, I'm actually not using a slideshow. I just have a static video, right? Okay, but as you see, this allows us some really great layout because not only do I have the video in the banner area that I want, but I can then overlay content on top of that. Now, if we scroll down a little bit further, we'll see that here inside of my content, inside this column stack, I'm actually doing a slideshow of videos, okay? This shows us that we actually don't need to use impact to be full screen all the time. We can use it within our content. And if you notice here, the actual content area here is kind of squarish, right? But I've added, again, full screen, widescreen video and then Impact you know, cropped off the video for us automatically and positioned the video so that it properly fills that area for us. And then further down on the bottom of this page, I just have another image slideshow that shows you that you can actually use these in more places than just the top of your web page. Now, if you're a screens user, you're gonna love Impact because you can use Impact to actually create full background slideshows for each screen's page. As you see on this page, I have a nice you know, image slideshow going on in my background of the screen's page. And if we look at the second page here, we'll notice that we can also use impact to insert video into the backgrounds of our screen's pages. So here we are on the impact controls demo page and this shows us that we can actually start adding controls to our impact slideshows as well. As you see in this demo, I'm using a full screen impact slideshow. I have arrows on the left and the right to help me navigate to previous and next slides, okay? And we also have bullets at the very bottom that can have numbers or to have the numbers turned off so that you can navigate to a specific slide. 
So if we scroll down on the page, we'll notice that uh, we can also have the controls displayed on hover. So if we see this slideshow here, it's actually a slideshow that I can navigate to the previous and next slides using the bullets or the arrows. Okay. Now I should add that the arrows do use font awesome. And so that this means that we have full control over the color, the size, and there are 10 different options available right now uh, for your arrows. And if we see in this example, the bullets are actually, you know, solid bullets. Uh, we don't have the numbers in them. So this gives us a little bit more flexibility with the bullets. Now, one thing you'll also notice with this particular slideshow is that it's not using the crossfade and it is using impacts slide routine. Okay. So this gives us, you know, a more traditional slide animation. Um, if that's what you want for your slideshow. Next, we'll see that we actually have external controls for impact. This allows us to, uh, from buttons, actually control next and previous slides. So if you notice here, when I click on this next button, it's actually causing this slideshow to go to the next slide for me. And then you have pause and play buttons as well. And there's also a control that's not shown here that allows you to create a scroll down button. Okay, so if you want a custom scroll down button, you can uh, easily add this simply by adding a class to your button. Now, something you probably didn't notice when I scrolled down is that the header that we saw on the very top of this page is now gone. So when I scroll up, that header is gone from the page. So let me refresh this page again. And what you'll notice here, I have my full screen header. And when I scroll down and then I go back up, what impact does is it removes that from the page. This is great if you only wanna show the header in certain instances, right? So if you wanna show the header when the person loads, but then when they scroll down, it's removed because really maybe it's just some splash screen to give them you know, some pizzazz to your site, right? But it's not something you really need the user to scroll back on because the, all the information that we need is within our content, right? So this is a great feature. And the last thing I wanna point out with Impact is that you can use it for a lot more subtle animations. If we have a look at this particular image at the bottom of the page, what you'll notice is that only this particular green portion of the page is actually being changed. This is because Impact is cycling through three different images where the only difference in the image is this green area within the image. This kind of gives us a very subtle but interesting effect to our websites that we can use um, you know, to, to add some pizzazz uh, with impact. So that kind of does it just for the simple feature overview of what impact can do for you. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna jump into Rapid Weaver and kind of get our hands dirty and do a basic setup of impact. So make sure to check out the impact demo project file that ships with impact and you can download it anytime from our documentation portal as well. Now, I'm not gonna dive into every you know, implementation here, but this is the actual project that was built, um, that was used to build the website that we just saw, right? So if you wanna see how particular things were done inside that project file, just go ahead and look and see exactly how we implemented it, okay? So what we're gonna do now is I'm actually just gonna start a completely blank stacks page. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add an impact stack to the page and what you'll notice is there is actually a second stack here called Impact Animate. And this allows us to animate content in um, when a slide appears, right? So if you have content in a particular Impact slide, you can animate that content in when that slide animates in as well, okay? Very cool. But let's go ahead and do a simple implementation of Impact here. And what you'll notice is we have an Impact slide and we can simply drag and drop an image directly into that slide, just like that. Now you can do local image or you can do a warehouse image, it's really up to you, okay? And then if you wanna add a new slide, just simply click on the plus button and you'll notice here that you can add an image slide, a video slide, or impact controls. So the impact controls are gonna be your dots and your arrows, okay? So if we added a video slide, we'll see here that um, basically we can provide the URLs to the warehouse image poster as well as the videos, okay? 
Now I've gone ahead and added a few image slides and I've just done image slides just to keep things simple for right now. Um, now what you'll notice here is that you can, like I said before, you can have a local image or you can do a warehouse image URL, okay? And if you'd like, if you wanna add specific content to this slide, you can go ahead and say in foreground content, you can say add content. And what you'll notice here is that there is now a, a drop down area that you can add content to. So if I wanted to add a text stack into here, I can go ahead and, um, you know, let's go ahead and make that text white. Okay. And what you'll notice is um, you have full control on the slide contents on whether or not where you exactly you want that content to be. So do you want it to be, you know, no, you can have normal. And what normal means is it'll just basically start the, the content at the top of the slide, just as if it was content um, inside the web page, right? Um, you can also, you know, align it left or right or have it vertically centered or horizontally centered, right? So it really is uh, very flexible in terms of how you can position the content, okay? Now, if you wanted multiple content things and position different locations, you could definitely use something like my target stack inside the impact uh, image slide. Um, so that way, maybe you have something at the bottom right and something at the top left or whatever, right? Um, just set the uh, horizontal content uh, or the positioning to normal, and then you can use target to position the content exactly where you want it, um, if you wanted multiple uh, things. So if, if we look at the actual uh, settings inside the main impact stack, they're gonna be pretty straightforward. Inside impact setup, um, the foreground is gonna be defaulted to none, but if you want, you can say floating, and what this will do is it will have a drop down area and this will have content that is gonna be displayed on all slides. So this is maybe um, if you wanna have a static header that, you know, and then the, the slideshow happens behind it, but that content will be the same on every single slide, okay? That's very useful. Um, then the size option, this is where we can actually define the sizing of impact. Now by default, we have a full screen hero header, right? And if we preview this page, we will see that that's exactly what we get. We get the full screen um, image header that takes up the entire width and height of the browser. But um, we can also, as I said earlier, we can do something like proportional, where we have a ton of defined aspect ratios, um, you know, a lot of predetermined ones, as well as you can do custom aspect ratios. So that, you know, you can easily, if you want a header, maybe you want to have a 16 by nine, or something like a, I, I kind of like the 21 by nine and the 10 by three, depending on your site, um, for exactly displaying, you know, headers. And again, impact will take the contents that you give it and it will make it fill that container. And if we look further down at the impact animations, we'll see that we have fade and slide as our options, okay? We could turn on autoplay. You can also have the ability to autoplay, but the only play it once, so that when it actually reaches the last slide, it stops. And I actually did this on the homepage of the Impact demo, right? So it went through all of the slides and then it stopped on the fall in love with Impact uh, slide. And then of course you have various things for, you know, slide duration, transition speed, initial fade in and crossfade and all that stuff, right? Uh, we have sp some specific settings for video. And that's when, when you have a video slide, is it gonna start immediately? Do you wanna start the video when the slide becomes active? or basically play it when it's active and then pause the video when it's inactive. Okay, so that gives us a lot of flexibility. Um, and then we also have the ability on touch devices to not play the video and only show the poster image. Next, we have a preloader. Uh, so if you have a lot of really large images or, or video, um, you can actually have a preloader be displayed, um, kind of a, you know, a spinning indicator for when um, you know, the slides are loading. Next, we can have touch device control. So maybe um, on touch devices, even for slideshows, you only want to have a static image and you don't want to actually display the entire slideshow. Uh, you can do that here. Uh, next, you can have an overlay. So if you want to actually have a colored overlay on, on top of everything, you can do that. So basically add maybe a tint and you can also have a tile on top of that as well. So you can have a combination of those two. Um, so you can have, again, a colored overlay with maybe a tiled overlay on top of that. 
This, this gives us a lot of flexibility and it's really great options. The next is the impact scroll down button. So um, do we wanna display that scroll button? Uh, and then tons of options for customizing that, right? The size, the color, the position of it, um, and things of that nature. Uh, and then in the advanced settings, uh, the Z index, uh, that, that could be important if you're you know, doing some themes. Uh, Z index could help you know, with ordering of, on the Z layer, right? Um, and then if you need to add a custom class, uh, you can, it's kind of more for more advanced reasons. Um, and then trigger ID. Uh, this is important if you wanna use those external controls that we saw earlier, because this ID is used in the class names that you're gonna use for those um, trigger classes. Now, if you notice here, we have a show trigger classes button. And if you click on that, it gives you just a quick little tool tip uh, for all of the classes that you will need to add for each uh, button type. So now let's go ahead and add the impact control stack to this. And what you'll see is by default, it's all disabled. So if we want to enable dots, we can do that. If we want to enable arrows, we can do that as well. And as you see, everything's pretty self-explanatory, right? Do we want to show things on hovered? Do we want to always show them? Um, there are tons of color options for every possible combination, right? The borders, the hover color, the fill color, the, the fill color on hover, right? Um, do we want to have um, slide numbers? If you don't want to show the slide numbers, just simply make them completely transparent. So make it opacity zero. Um, you have control over the size and the position, right? And then the arrows, same thing. Uh, we can have a drop down of tons of, of arrows. You have color uh, settings as well as uh, positions and sizing uh, for the arrows as well. So very self-explanatory if you've used uh, hardly almost any stack before. Um, this should really be intuitive to use. So as you see, impact is really easy to use, right? Um, there's a lot of settings, but they're all pretty intuitive, right? Just add a new slide that you want, either an image or a video, drag and drop your image in there, or you can warehouse it, right? And of course, if you add a video, videos need to be warehoused, okay? Now, one thing I should add, you know, there are three video files, um, but, um, all modern browsers support MP4 now. So if you're only worried about supporting modern browsers, okay, you only really need to supply the MP4 file. But if you wanna support older versions of Chrome and older versions of Firefox, you can use the AugV and WebM, okay? But really, um, you really only need to add the MP4 file. So that's something I, I forgot to mention. But, Impact's really beautiful, right? Um, it's, uh, like I said, it's easy to use, it's gorgeous, it's flexible because it, it can we can add it to where, wherever we want and Impact will take care of filling the content into the area for us, right? So I hope you enjoy Impact. Um, I hope it helps you make beautiful websites. And uh, thank you very much for watching, everybody. Bye.